I'd like to call the 24th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Members. There are seven present and Alderperson Bourne is remote. Okay, Alderperson uh, Mitchell and Alderperson Ackley are excused. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Thank you very much. Uh, would everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of uh, minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Aye. aye. Item 1.4 is confirmation of the mayor's appointments. I'll turn it over to Charles Adams, our city attorney. So the first one is 1 1.4, confirmation of the mayor's appointment of Marlo Testweed to the Harbor Center Business Improvement District Board. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for confirmation? Abstain. Seven I is one abstain. Motion passes. Next is item 1.5, confirmation of mayor's appointments. City attorney. Yes, this is another confirmation of mayor's appointment. James Owen to the Redevelopment Authority. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. And then 1.6, confirmation of the mayor's appointment of Charlie Wig to the Architectural Review Board. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. And I'd also like to know, let you know that uh, we were able to find a contractor that lives in the city, uh, and that's Charlie Wiggs, so we didn't have to go outside of the bounds with that, uh, that appointment. <coughs> All those in favor, rather, please call the roll. Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Next item is public forum, city clerk. There is no one this evening. Thank you. And then we'll go on to a presentation of the 2020 downtown district activation and placemaking plan by Chad Pelichek, the director of planning and development. You're live. So thank you, Mayor. Today I'm gonna to talk about a downtown activation and placemaking plan that we recently completed with Grafe uh, Consultants out of Green Bay. So the introduction and purpose. So this is a, in 2014, the Harbor Center Master Plan was completed in partnership with the Downtown Business Improvement District in the city of Sheboygan. And that was really the honest for getting um, a lot of what you're seeing in the vibrancy of our downtown today. Um, housing, 
uh, cross connection in marketing and then placemaking. So I'll talk about placemaking in a little bit more depth as we move forward, but this is really kind of taking this new version of this plan is taking uh, the, the successes of that 2014 plan of which about 90% of the work in that plan has been completed. Um, and kind of evolving into some additional districts and some additional uh, activities for us to continue to bring some vibrancy to the downtown. So in the 2014 plan, the, uh, there was a number of goals and actions, install streetscape amenities to reinforce the arts, culture, and food district and encourage pedestrian activity throughout the downtown. Um, there was a number of projects that were completed with the largest one being the uh, revitalization of the library plaza that was completed last year um, and then some street streetscape improvements along a street and the niagara avenue corridor um, another goal was to increase awareness and understanding of the sheboygan market opportunities among property owners investors and developers and you've seen that success uh, with the uh, additional housing that has happened, although this plan added, asked for another 50 additional downtown housing units, and we've actually uh, are closer to 350. Uh, but yearly, we hold a regional developer summit where we invite people from the outside to come in and see the opportunities that we have, and that was really the success for moving these developments forward. <clears throat> Other goals were to establish the Arts and Culture District, and we did that with the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, uh, expanding public art and introducing family-friendly activities in partnership with the Mead Public Library, um, and then support the coordination among local and regional tourism efforts, events, and consumer marketing to leverage investment. Um, and there's a number of events that have been held, Night Market being one of them, uh, in partnership with the Sheboygan County Interfaith Organization. Um, another goal was to improve the mobility within the bid by promoting alternative modes of transportation and this is kind of where the uh, downtown trolley, the seasonal trolley service that Shoreline Metro operates uh, kind of came out of and then uh, shared bike systems which we continue to discuss today on uh, where we should go with that. Uh, another improve wayfinding and navigation within the bid to encourage ex visitors to explore additional businesses and amenities. Um, although we didn't create an app as what was planned in there, we did reestablish street connections by opening up Wisconsin mm -hmm. and New York avenues and then installing pedestrian wayfinding signage throughout the downtown. And lastly, improve economic returns and reduce vacancy for property owners in the downtown. So we developed design standards that our staff follows today as somebody's coming forward and wants to make renovations to their um, storefront that it kind of follows uh, a plan for how we do so and then preserve downtown property values by increasing the aesthetics and encouraging quality renovation. So the new plan, the 2019 plan that um, we're talking about here today is to continue to create placemaking enhancements at key locations to reinforce identity, celebrate strength and adjust challenges, improve them, continue to improving the mobility of both within the downtown districts with alternate uh, modes of transportation, uh, continue <coughs> to support local and regional tourism, and then preserve property values. So what is placemaking? Placemaking is a collaborative process where community members, business partners, and property owners and municipal governments work to reimagine public spaces. Uh, the goal of placemaking projects is to help people feel more connected to places, more excited to walk to lunch and shop locally and play with their kids in parks and other mm -hmm. green spaces. So on the screen is some examples of placemaking that you see today that was success of the 2014 plan, sidewalk seating, planters and trees, markets and festivals, downtown district signage, seating areas and community events with the uh, city green. <clears throat> this plan also, this plan looks at four key areas. So the uh, Michigan Avenue and the Indiana Avenue are two districts that haven't been focused on in the past um, and that are included in the plan as well as uh, what the paradigm folks would call uptown, which is primarily um, Erie Avenue to Michigan Avenue, uh, that area, and then the downtown uh, basically from Erie Avenue down to the river. So each one of these districts is broken out with a number of priority recommendations. Michigan Avenue, um, the three or four pri uh, priority recommendations are the right size of the roadway. So there's a lot of 
uh, road on Michigan Avenue, a wide road with very wide parking lanes. So the idea is how do you try to bring people together uh, with bump outs and those types of things we'll talk further about. Uh, strategic nodes of art lighting, uh, district gateway and entrance markers, and then facade improvement projects. In the uptown, it's very similar. Uh, priority recommendations are strategic nodes of lighting, sidewalk seating, and facade improvement projects. Uh, downtown is the same as uptown, and then Indiana Avenue is really kind of going off of the whole innovation district and uh, working with district-specific street furniture, um, gateway signage, facade improvements, and bike path signage and landscaping. <laughs> So in the recommendations, the gateway signage and street uh, prints, you can see on the screen, there's a number of ideas that came forward on different signage to identify these corridors, as well as street prints along the key corridors to try to slow traffic. So there's some plan, there would, could be some plans to paint some areas um, and, and try to slow traffic with traffic calming with, with painting and those types of things on crosswalks and streets. Um, <clears throat> We've seen some murals already on buildings, particularly on the outside of the Above and Beyond Children's Museum. Um, but the idea of trying to use more uh, district entrance mural signage on key buildings within those districts to identify uh, those districts is, is another thing that's planned. Uh, parklets, so parklets are taking parking stalls and putting barriers around them and having seating areas out in the street. Uh, to try to green up areas. So in this picture, it shows the U.S. Bank building and what it would be if some of those parking stalls were created into parklets to bring some extra greenage to the green and stuff along the street. Um, and then there's some pictures on the bottom of how parklets, and you see these a lot of times in larger communities as a way to try to encourage people out on the street uh, to dine and, and socialize. Uh, strategic nodes of art lighting, so there's Different examples here. Some of that, uh, are, some of that lighting has already happened in the alleys downtown, uh, in partnership with the business improvement district. These are just some additional examples of what that might be. Um, activating vacant storefronts. So the idea is to uh, take storefronts and put artwork and/or uh, dining to try to activate it. So when you're walking down the street, you feel a sense of connection uh, with those types of businesses. And then sidewalk and alley uh, seating for restaurants. So we some of that has happened already with the Black Pig Alley. Um, but do, considering more of that uh, alley seating for restaurants and people to kind of come out of the building and into these public spaces. And then right-sizing the roadway, particularly as it relates to Michigan Avenue, um, the idea of some type of uh, bump outs and or landscaped barriers with seating and stuff in to try to connect people closer to the street and not feel like it's, you know, an airport runway and trying to green up and, and make it a place, a, a third place where people want to be. And then lastly, uh, facade improvements and projects that support uh, the rehabilitation. So we've successfully worked with uh, the cautious company on the property where they are today with the paradigm. And then the other uh, photo is the Mavericks Barbershop, which were historic preservation renovation projects funded by the city. Under the innovation district specific street furniture, this would be related to Indiana Avenue and trying to give a sense of place with uh, improvements on the street and kind of tied it into the whole innovation district and how that all plays together as a tech corridor um, and kind of including the streetscaping into those areas. Wayfinding strategy to encourage walking and biking and telling people how far it is on distances and those types of things so they know where they're going and, and how, what to expect. So the next step, so we um, see this plan as being implemented with a variety of grants and CDBG, uh, Community Development <coughs> Block Grant uh, funds that we have. Um, so th the idea would be to start uh, in a document later in the agenda, there's a, a allocations for the 2020 block grant that has streetscaping uh, funding in there. Some of this stuff will be funded with that. Um, and then the plan is to work with representatives of the districts in, in having developing meetings and partnerships to advance these placemaking in the four districts. 
And then I will leave you with the project for public spaces and that placemaking shows people just how powerful their collective vision can be. It helps to reimagine everyday spaces and to see anew the potential of parks, downtown, waterfronts, plazas, neighborhoods, streets, markets, campuses, and public buildings. So that's what I have. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but the Planning Commission has unanimously approved this and the document is before you tonight for uh, adoption and then we will start implementation. So thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Are there any questions? Very good. Next item uh, is mayor's announcements. The city of Sheboygan is taking proactive steps to protect the health of our community by making recommendations that are meant to slow the spread of the coronavirus in our community and reduce the number of people infected. The steps we are implementing will impact people in our community. Our Sheboygan County Health Department is making these recommendations in consultation with the Centers for D D Disease Control and Prevention and based upon the best information we have to protect the health of everyone in our community. We have closed the Senior Activity Center, the Sheboygan Water Utility in Maywood, and last week we saw large community events like Flapjack Day and Ice Bowling also canceled. At this time, I'd like to bring to the podium Assistant Fire Chief uh, Charles Butler, who serves as the Emergency Operations Director for the City of Sheboygan, to give us an update on the coronavirus in Sheboygan. Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of Council. Um, uh, as the Assistant Fire Chief, my job also is to uh, handle all hazards emergency management for the city. and. And I uh, just wanted to report to you tonight that um, while this is something that is unprecedented and is uh, on everybody's mind right now, it's in every media outlet, every source, every email we get right now, um, I just wanted to uh, update you on a couple of things that are happening here locally uh, for the city of Sheboygan. Um, right now, the uh, Sheboygan County Emergency Operations Center is partially open. This is primarily a public health emergency, so public health takes the lead, and as you know, we do not have a municipal public health agency, but we do partner with Sheboygan County um, to provide those services to our city. Um, so uh, right now, uh, that operations center is open. We are working uh, long hours uh, through the weekend, late in the day, starting early in the morning with meetings. Um, we do have our incident management structure in place, and uh, we are, uh, uh, doing everything we can. Right now, honestly, the biggest part of the operation, um, aside from just uh, uh, communicating between uh, our internal partners and the school system and uh, the uh, other agencies in the county, law enforcement, the hospitals, the clinics, uh, anybody that's really impacted, and, and there are quite a few, including businesses. So um, we're trying to uh, keep everybody informed with what's going on. And honestly, aside from some of the things that are happening directly related to the uh, COVID exposures, um, which I will have uh, Star Grossman um, from Public Health come up here in a minute, but we are doing a tremendous amount of information management right now through a joint information center. We have regular meetings with all of the uh, concerned partners and their information people to make sure that really all of our information is as accurate as it can be, as timely as it can be, and, uh, and as steady and continuous and to as many outlets as we can get it. Because at a time like this, we really need to be the loudest voice in the room. And that's what we're trying to do right now. We have to, we really have to focus on getting the correct message out. So, um, that all by itself is a huge task right now, and we appreciate everybody's understanding and patience with all of these changes and disruptions to our life, but uh, we are trying to follow the recommendations and also trying to make just good rational decisions based on how we manage our lives going forward. So um, uh, with that being said, I'm going to have Star Grossman come up here. She is the Sheboygan County uh, Public Health Officer, and she's going to speak to you just a little bit about some of the specifics of those cases, uh, what this is not, and what it is for us, and how we're proceeding with that. So, start. All right. Um, thanks, Chuck, and uh, thank you for having me here today to talk a little bit. Um, so, my name is Star Grossman. I'm the health officer for Sheboygan County Division of Public Health. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background so you have some situational awareness about what we're seeing locally. So we have in our county three confirmed cases of COVID-19. 
And um, in the state of Wisconsin, they're uh, announced today that there are 47 cases and they've tested 504 people in the state and or 504 negative um, tests have been done in the state so far. Um, for our three confirmed cases that we have, they came from international travel and Egyptian cruise. Um, and when they were, when they came back to Wisconsin, they were told to self-isolate um, when they left their flight. Um, and so they were self-isolating and were supposed to call the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health or their um, health care provider if they started to have symptoms. They did go and seek care in Fond du Lac County and were um, tested in Fond du Lac County. Um, and we did get results of those tests on Friday, March 13th, um, when we were also notified that they were tested. So we didn't, we weren't aware initially that they had um, been tested. But once we got the results, we um, notified it, our state partners in the media um, and um, notified uh, our community of those three cases. Um, Sheboygan County Division of Public Health is working on our contact investigation right now, just trying to make sure that we follow up with that we follow up with Yeah, cool. Okay. <laughs> Jim, could you please mute your line? Sorry. <laughs> so, okay. um, so sh the role of public health is really uh, making sure that we can stop the spread of this illness any further in our community. So we have a team of nurses that are working um, very long hours to try and make sure that we follow up with anybody who may have had exposure to these cases. Um, so far we have about between 90 and 100 people on our contact investigation list. Um, we've been following up with every single person on that list and calling to make sure we do a symptom review with them, um, see if they have any symptoms. If they don't have symptoms, they're told to self-quarantine at home and we do daily virtual monitoring with them. So we check in with them um, once a day virtually, and they have to um, list out their symptoms. If they don't check in that day, we call them um, to make sure that they're doing okay. Um, and so we ask them to take their temperature twice daily and also ask about any symptoms. Um, if should, someone should become symptomatic, they are, we help connect them with testing through our healthcare systems. And um, so, so far we uh, have had 90 to 100 contacts. We've referred 18 people for testing and we have uh, four negative results back so far and the rest are pending or people that are still trying to get in for that test. Um, we're working on increasing community awareness about our contact tracing process and our isolation and quarantine process and what that all looks like. Um, and then we've also, as Chuck alluded to, have been working very closely trying to get messaging out to partners, um, especially with um, so many contacts in our community. There's been a lot of questions about, um, you know, if my, if I'm sick and, or if I'm a contact to someone who's sick and my wife is not a contact to someone who's sick, can they, can my wife still go around the community or do I, do they, we, do we both need to stay home? There's been a lot of questions like that. So trying to clear up all of that confusion and make sure that people know what the recommendation is. Um, the biggest, with everything, everything's been changing very quickly. Um, the guidelines from the state and federal government are changing, it seems like, pretty rapidly. So trying to stay on top of what those guidelines are and then share them out with our community. Um, but from what we know right now, there's been no local spread of this um, illness within our community. So we're really just working on trying to get those contacts notified and making sure that they are self-quarantined and know uh, how to take care of themselves if they become ill. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Holder Bruce and Sorensen. Thank you so much, Star, for, for chatting with us today. I, I'm, I'm a little curious. So you said you have a, a contact list of like 90 to 100 people. Yes. Who, how do you find these people? Are these people that are self-reporting that they have symptoms? Or are these people that you, um, your department has identified? So it's a little bit of both. Um, when we get a confirmed case of any category one illness, and COVID is no different, we contact the person who is ill, and we walk through with them based off of the disease process um, who you've been in contact with in the last, four, and for COVID, it's for the last 14 days. Mm -hmm. So we talk about um, who have you seen over the last 14 days, and we consider close contact anybody who's been within three to six feet. So um, then our, our contacts or our, our um, confirmed cases help us to kind of build that list out of 
who that person would be and who we should all contact. So we start making those contacts. Um, Sheboygan is a small community, and so a lot of times when you start making phone calls like this, um, word gets out and then people start calling you and saying, hey, I know someone who knows someone who said this, and yeah. so it's a lot of rumor management and those types of things, but then we try and work to the bottom of were they a true contact in helping them get resources. Are there any additional concerns with these three individuals, um, you know, from their time coming from the airport to, you know, Sheboygan? Have they been in contact with other people? Is there any concern about that, that sort of community spread with those individuals? So what we look for is, um, we look, they were told to self quarantine, but we're really basing that 14 days off of when they became symptomatic. Okay. So, um, and they give us that information kind of where they've, where they've been once they've become symptomatic and we go from there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much uh, for that information. The next planned city council meeting is uh, 22 days from now on April 8th. And in the meantime, I ask all the chairs of our city committees not to schedule any meetings until the week of April 18th, unless there's something very timely that has to be dealt with. Uh, on April 18th, uh, rather week of April 13th, we'll need to uh, close out all of the dockets from all of the, count, the, the committees and get those documents back to council as we close our our council year in an adjourned sign die to close that out. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then our city staff is met to review operations of city government and Daryl Huffland is gonna be giving us an update on those items. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, as you mentioned earlier tonight, uh, a couple uh, city facilities uh, have closed, uh, the Senior Activity Center and the Water Utility uh, payment window uh, have closed. Also, uh, all city uh, park facilities, buildings specifically, including restrooms, uh, are closed. Uh, anyone that has scheduled uh, a reservation uh, will be notified by the city staff and refunds will be mailed uh, to them. Uh, as far as other city facilities, uh, all uh, remaining uh, buildings will be open. Uh, city hall city staff will remain working at those uh, locations uh, either in place or remotely uh, but will always be available to answer any questions regarding city services face-to-face -face or in-person visits to these city facilities are highly discouraged uh, staff will be limiting informal meetings involving the public uh, and again residents are uh, asked to contact the applicable department uh, there are listings and directories on the city's website uh, in checking with the city clerk uh, regarding absentee voting, uh, again, City Hall remains open, and so the city clerk's office will be open for in-person absentee uh, voting. Uh, begins on Wednesday, March 18th, continues through Friday, April 3rd. Hours are between 8 and 4.30, with extended hours on Friday, April 3rd, being from 8 till 5 p.m. Request for an absentee ballot by mail. Uh, again, a ballot will be mailed to you at home, so please uh, contact uh, websites or the city clerk's office. Uh, registering to vote, uh, Wednesday, March 18th, is a deadline for electors to register to vote by mail or online for the presidential preference primary in the spring election. After this date, electors must register in person at the city clerk's office or at the polling place on election day. Uh, Mead Public Library remains open at this time. Uh, police uh, and fire department program changes. Uh, the police department is suspending fingerprinting services, Citizen Academy, uh, Hop with a Cop event, Coffee with a Cop event, and police department tours. For the fire department, uh, they are suspending departmental tours. Uh, municipal court dates will continue as scheduled. Uh, Pre-trial conferences have been adjourned until May. Uh, all adjournment requests will be honored for any reason. Uh, payments, again, the recommendation is to make payments either by phone or through a drop-off. Uh, two drop-off uh, sites are available in the city. Uh, one is located outside City Hall on 9th Street, uh, and the police department has a drop-off box as well. Uh, as we heard earlier tonight, uh, the city is working in conjunction. We'll continue to coordinate with the county's uh, public health division, uh, who is also in 
working in conjunction with state and national health agencies. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, thank you very Mike, much. Mike, Mike, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Daryl, my question is, or actually it would be to uh, Chuck, uh, is it possible for committees to meet in their entirety by phone? Uh, yeah, this isn't on quite yet, so. We have too many lights on. So uh, the question was whether committees can meet uh, entirely uh, remotely. The answer to that is yes, with a caveat. Uh, you, can, you can meet entirely remotely, but we must provide a location for the public uh, to attend and to hear what's happening and, and to be involved and participate. Uh, so the way to do that would be to continue to hold those meetings in their regular locations, but allow uh, people to uh, also uh, remotely attend uh, someone, whether it's a, a member of the committee or, or staff uh, from City Hall will have to man that uh, location to make sure that uh, uh, people can hear, et cetera. You know, all, all things being equal, uh, particularly with finance and personnel, we have a, you know, fairly large agenda. I mean, just viewing the, the items that are coming to us from tonight's meeting. I think it's something we may, may want to consider, unless it's a huge hassle, but it'd be a, something to, to think about. Thanks for bringing up that idea. Any other questions or suggestions? Go ahead. I'll... Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one additional uh, service that the city provides, of course, is, is transit service. Uh, Derek Mink, uh, the uh, utility director, uh, excuse me, uh, Shoreline Metro uh, director, uh, is in contact with his counterparts as well as state and federal officials. Uh, again, all services remain in effect. As a result of the closure of public and uh, private schools in Sheboygan, uh, there are going to be some service uh, level adjustment as a result of uh, a reduced student population. However, uh, transit service remains in effect. Uh, until further notice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And just like to also uh, tell people that uh, we have a few poll workers that are in that category uh, of older people that have a high uh, issue with this uh, coronavirus, and some of them are uh, not able to make uh, their normal uh, work day at the polls. If anyone's interested, please call the clerk's office for more information. Okay, with that, we'll go on to our hearings. Item 2.1 is hearing number 10 of 1920, pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices and sent to the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening for the pur proposed assessments for the installation of new water main or laterals in Geely Avenue from Calumet Drive to North 23rd Street. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those, in, I would please call the roll for closure. Alderperson Bourne. His mic is off. He's muted. Aye. Hi. The motion to close the hearing is aye? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Eight ayes. Motion passes. And then on the consent agenda, that'll include items 3.2 through 3.13. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would, I would like to also pull 3.12. Can we put a motion on the floor first? Thank you. I make a motion. A motion to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. And then uh, the item you wanted to pull was? 3.12. Okay, we'll put that on the floor for discussion. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to uh, adopt the new lease. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So 
under discussion, I City we, Attorney. We need to make it we need to make it clear what what you're doing. So, it, what you're doing is moving to amend the document so as to provide that the the new lease document is the proper attached document. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, that's on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Did we have a second on that? Yes. It was Ryan. It was Ryan. And this okay, is, thank this you. Is the first, this is the motion to amend. To amend. <laughs> and then you'll have the final motion. Older person born? I. Approved as amended. Eight eyes. The motion to amend passes. Now we'll need a motion to approve as amended. Alder person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Uh, then the other items on the consent agenda are before us. Is there any other discussion on any of the other items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Aye. <clears throat> Eight eyes. Motion passes. Going on to reports of officers. Um, items 4.1 through 4.4 will be referred to various committees under resolutions. Item 5.1 is resolution number 185 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue supporting the Wisconsin Assembly Bill 48, AB 48. Um, all the person Wolf. Thank you, Mary. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mary. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of this. I just had a question. Is, is the state legislature, are they in session anymore that, that they'd be taking this up? Yes. I, I, okay, I didn't know if there was a timeline associated with um, with this bill and if that was moving forward. So that was just my question. Thank you. Okay. Mayor. Yes, Jim. Uh, I believe the uh, assembly has adjourned and the Senate will still be in session for uh, another week or so. Correct. Thanks for that information. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to item uh, 5.2 through 5.10 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number one, excuse me, 281 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 184 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne approving the fiscal year 2020 one year action plan for the community development block grant program submission and recommends adopting the resolution with amendments. Alder Person Donahue. I uh, move to uh, receive. Second. Hang on, Jim. Um, I move to re receive the report of the committee and adopt the substitute resolution. 
And we have a, very Thank good. You. Thank you for that motion and support. That is before us for discussion. Are there any questions? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Oh, I'm sorry. Chad Pelichek. I, I, <laughs> I, I just wanted to mention that the committee deliberated on the mounts, and after we recalculated them, the mounts are a little bit higher, uh, as you will see, for the big brothers, big sisters than what was originally discussed. But this was, this was the motion that you made, and they were calculated as such. But I wanted to clarify that it wasn't necessarily the mount that we had talked about, because in the quick calculation at the committee, um, we had taken half of uh, the one that we did not fund, and we needed to take the whole thing. So I'm just giving you that heads up. Thanks. Thanks for that information. Mayor, and if I could just uh, yes, uh, go ahead. reflect on that a little bit more. We had, I think, a really interesting uh, discussion at Finance and Personnel regarding the allocation of these funds. Uh, and I found a resolution from 2008, uh, believe it or not, um, which uh, sets out sort of a community involvement Did you have process. Mary Lynn speak into her microphone? How's that, Jim? Well, Jim? I'm better, thank you. Okay. So in terms of the process, I think we all agreed that for next year, maybe we'll try to be a little bit more proactive and involve a bit more of uh, community input um, we don't necessarily want to go back to the process that we had when I was first on the council of, of extensive interviews with uh, potential recipients because the amounts are generally very small. Um, but it still may be a way for us to look to expand our community participation. Thank you. Any mm -hmm. other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? I seven eyes, one abstain. Motion passes. Under item seven point one is resolution number one seventy nine of nineteen twenty by all the persons Donahue and Wolf supporting the Hmong Lao community opposing federal deportation of Hmong Lao residents to Laos. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I uh, proudly move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? I eight eyes. Motion passes. Item two point two is resolution number one seventy eight of nineteen twenty by Alderperson Ackley confirming the exercise of police power and making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for the installation of a new water main or laterals in Geely Avenue from Calumet Drive to North Twenty Third Street. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Under other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Adams. 8.1 is a resolution by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Lemonhue Tree Service for the complete removal of 80 trees and stumps and associated landscape restoration. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to con uh, convene in closed session pursuant to sub A. The exception in section 19.85 sub 1 sub G Wisconsin stats in order to confer with legal counsel for the city of city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to the litigation in which it is involved to wit 
discussion and possible action regarding assessment litigation relating to Walmart, Sheboygan County case numbers, uh, 2017 CV 616, 2018 CV 441, and 2019 CV uh, 444. And sub B, the exemption in sections 19.85 sub 1 sub D, Wisconsin stats in order to del deliberate the negoti negotiable, negotiate, sorry, and purchase the property from uh, Union Pacific Rail Railway adjacent to the South Business Drive, South 14th Street between Union Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue, in including the spur between South 10th Street and South 13th Street adjacent to Indiana Avenue and, tr and transfer the real property on the South Pier located on 501 and 502 Indiana Avenue formerly owned by Pentair Corporation and improvements to the land located at 229 South Pier Drive. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Could have made it longer. All those, <laughs> would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? I, Mayor, am I, gonna, am I gonna be able to hang on for the closed session? I don't believe so, Jim. Wonderful. <laughs> Here's eight eyes. The motion for closed session passes, and I should also note that the uh, item under other matters, 8.1, will be referred to the Public Works Committee. And for the uh, people uh, viewing tonight, this will uh, end our council transmission for this evening. The council will adjourn in closed session. Thank you very much. Now we'll take a short five minute uh, recess. We're gonna reconvene closed session in these chambers. So just stay in your seats or return to them shortly.